Okay, we're going to work with the flex box today, and I have my code for you to play with. It's, I'm not sure what exactly what stage it'll be at, but I've got where I'm using row reverse, column reverse, and row up online. It's at web115.mccdgm.net slash web115 slash flexbox. At least for this semester, this may move in the future, uh, but you should be able to find it from the index page. And you'll, your resource is going to be the CSS tutorial on Flexbox at the W3 schools. So I wanted to sh just show you some of the options I'm working with, and I'm not using all of them, but we're going to play with the Flexbox, and I've set things up, and I've played with them a bit. So let's take a look at these items one at a time. I've got a row set up here, and my row is constrained by a class of container, maximum width, margin, border, border radius padding. That's this outside container. It's not actually going to 960 because I override it in the ID. So my row has a display of flex that makes everything that makes it a flex block box. It's got a maximum width of 500 pixels, and you'll see that I, when I make changes to this, it will change the display here. And I'm using a combination here of a flex flow row. You also have the option of row reverse. And that will change the order. You also have the option of using align items and justify content. And together, they're, they don't both do things. But, so let's take that one out. So I've got justify content space between. And since I'm not using the wrap option, it doesn't do anything. But when I add the wrap option, that will let it expand here. Now it's expanding because my row is using the box auto option. The box auto option has it automatically resize so that it will take up all of the available space. And you can see that happening in each row. It expands to take up the whole space. If I use the box zero option, and that's set up in my, that's your done here. So box auto has a flex auto. This is a flex zero. I've just changed it to the flex zero you can see that that has some spacing apart. And that's where your align item cent center, I'm sorry, that's where your justify content space between comes up. You have that option. There's several justify content options. You can center, and that won't have any spacing unless you particularly put in margins. You also have the option to Put it at the flex end. That makes it all aligned to the right hand side here. Or I'm sorry, the left hand side here. Flex end. Let's flip it from row reverse. I think that'll give me what I thought I was going to get. Row wrap. Yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can play with the direction, the way it aligns, things like that. Um, but if you Want it? To, you you have the option again of reversing these orders. So we've got the column here. Let's take a look at my column. So we've got the classes container. The ID is my column. I'm using box auto, and that should auto resize to take up the available room. So let's look at the column. We've got a display of flex. We've got a maximum width of 800. We can change this. It'll change the look a bit. We've got the maximum height of 500. If you don't do a maximum height. If it doesn't have a, if it's not being constrained by height, it'll have a slightly different reaction. So you just get one column here. Uh, we have the choice here of align items center. We can do baseline.
you can do. Stretch. And you can play with each of these. And I encourage you, the best way to learn this stuff is just to get in here and play with it. So you're going to play with some of the different settings. I expect you to use at least, you're going to have at least four flex, flex containers uh, with a display of flex. And play with the maximum height and width because if you don't do that, you won't force it to wrap. So here, my column reverse. This is forcing it to wrap because it doesn't let the height grow endlessly. And we could change this here as well. And you, depending on how you constrain the container, you're, they'll stack in different ways. And you can do these with max height and max width. That allows you for some degree of responsiveness. And I want you, I really want you to pretty much just to play with this. Take a look at my code, play with my code, then create your own. You're not going to be using empty boxes. You're going to be using thumbnail images. But this will give you a place to start. I want you to look through my code. I want you to try changing some of the settings and playing with the Flexbox settings here in the CSS3 Flexbox. If you look at this stuff and then apply it to, apply it to the template that I give you, you'll get a good understanding of how the code works. And then you can go out and create your code. Now I do want you to start that from scratch. Remember each container has to be set to display flex. The contents in the container have the option of flex zero, flex auto. Most of the stuff is being done at the container level. A few things are being done at the object level. And I want you to play with columns, rows, reverse, wrap. Um, and you should at least attempt the flex auto, flex zero, and see how they change things. So at least play with those in the initial code that I give you to play with. And try applying each of the different options that you have here to one of these areas to see how it works.